So with the clouds or the sky in place, now I can start working on the mountain again. I think I'll start by blocking in all these shadow areas. Because it's pretty much the same colour on all of this um, this side of these mountains. So I can quickly block those in first. Now if you go in with your pencils at a 90 degree angle, so you're getting the point right into the paper, they just wear out within a few strokes and you get that blunt or rounded tip to them. So you can see I always, when I'm blocking in, I use the pencil at a really uh, shallow angle and that's keeping my pencil sharp and then I rotate it every now and again so I don't get a flat area on there. And you can see I'm not going over the um, gouache at all. I'm trying to reserve that ready for the white, um, pure whites to go on there with pastel. Okay, so that's pretty much done now. I've just got a few more areas to go in here. And then I'll be ready to start adding some of the darks as well. And then using my little bit of um, pastel mat paper, like a swatch, so I can try out all these colours. Because sometimes you think the colour is accurate on the pencil, and you put it down, and you think, "Wow, that's much darker, or much browner, or too warm, whatever than uh, you expected it to be." And then other pencils, then you think that's probably not going to be the colour, and when you do it, it actually is. So it's worth keeping those bits of swatches and it's got to be the same paper otherwise it just this point I suggest won't work so I've got a nice sharp pencil I'm going to start to add a few details in on this um, shadow side they're going to be a bit dark at the beginning but I'm going to layer other colors on top again to, to warm them up and to lighten them as well So as I'm putting the edges on, you can see how it's really bringing the mountains forwards from the from the sky.
Now, of course, it would have been a big mistake if I'd gone in with a black pencil here. Because if this was black, then when I came forwards in the drawing and actually put in the, the darkest dark, so that would be the, the foreground trees, you wouldn't have had that feeling of recession. So this needed to be a dark blue, and I can easily lighten this a bit more with a lighter blue on top if I feel that I haven't got that recession. So now just bring in some of the details down into the mountain as well. So the details are not too difficult to do, you just need a sharp pencil. Fortunately, the darker colours are easier to sharpen. When you start going to the, the very pale pinks and the, the whites, especially those pale uh, creamy colours or, or pinky colours, it starts to get more harder to uh, get a nice sharp point on them because they're just a little bit more prone to crumble. So not worrying about every tiny little dot, but I am trying to get it quite accurate. I wouldn't want to go much smaller than this because you could see I would really struggle to get those details uh, fine enough. Now always keep your eye open for subtle colour changes. So I can see, you know, more easily than you can see on screen with the reference photo that I've got some of this, you know, different colour blue coming down here, more of a purple tinge to the blue. So I'm always looking for that. So those little colour changes that will make the difference from, you know, what looks like a novice or beginner piece of art to something more advanced. And that's the benefit as well of doing colour studies on location if you can. You get to see even more of these colour changes. So I'm just detailing around this mountain as well. Very light touch. I don't want thick, hard edged lines. So I'm really being quite cautious and careful. I don't have to put in every single little dot. I'm just getting in that general uh, appearance of what I'm seeing in the reference. And that comes down here a bit more to the bottom. You see drawn around the white areas as well as much as I can just to give myself plenty of tooth to get, get the pure white on top later.
Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon. And now as I start to add some of the lighter tones, the lighter blues, and really punch up the white, that's when it all starts to come together, look a lot more realistic, a lot more 3D. And you don't have to do a great deal to it to start to get that effect. So it's a very light blue I'm using. And it was really worth me doing that little study first because that gave me the confidence that I knew at least how to tackle um, this mountain. And it gave me an idea as well of the coloured pencils I needed to use. So it certainly wasn't time wasted. Now lately on my drawings I've been finding that to get a white to look even more um, vibrant, zingy, as for want of a better word, I've been putting some of this kind of shocking pink right around the edges and I find that when I put the white on then, even though only a tiny bit of this pink will, will be left because I'll draw over most of it, that it really does enhance that very vibrant, very very white uh, highlight. You can see a nice sharp pencil now for the details. That's a Carbothello pencil, but I could have used any of the others. The whiter white pencil would be a, a Caran d'Ache, but because that's got a softer um, nib to it, softer pastel to it, then it doesn't hold a point very well. And I want to get a nice, nice sharp edge around here.
Okay, so that's starting to come together a lot more now. And you can see that pink working in my favor as well to make it really zing, as I said earlier on. I'm just putting in these details now on that underlayer so you can see the value of getting the value of the underlayer correct. You squint at your reference. If anything, I want the value, so the lightness and darkness of this, to be uh, even lighter for the general area of the mountains because the worse it will happen then, it'll give even more of a feeling of recession and distance. I certainly don't want it to be darker. And I'm just going to carry on now with the same technique and start to detail up the rest of these smaller mountains on the right hand side. So taking my time, putting in all these tiny little trees and other things that are right on the edge, making sure I've got the shape of the mountains just right. Remember, with something as easily recognizable as this, it's really critical to get that shape just right. So just lightening a couple of these edges so I can go over the top with a, a lighter blue. That's not a problem at all. And then I can continue with that underlay. See, I check my pencils against the uh, reference, but it's even better to get a scrap piece of paper and, and put some on there. But just getting these little tiny trees, it's just giving a bit of a jagged outline on top of this peak. That comes around down here. And then, because this is such a well known uh, mountain, I need to get these shapes. Nice and accurate. See, so checking that blue against that. I know it's right, but it doesn't hurt to, to keep checking. And I know I can get the dark on top of here, so I can just block that in quite wide, widely and uh, come in with the darker colors. Now I'm selecting my Duent pencils. I've got some uh, lovely blues in there, some unusual blues. It's just about it's the right tonal value. I know I need to get a bit of purple in there as well, so I'm going to have to layer that colour and blend it in with this blue. You can see I'm going very gently, taking that colour up into the mountain, and then I need to come across and make this edge that same color blue for now got quite a hard edge as it's coming forward in the landscape
So you can see as I build a layer up, it's all about combining one color with another. You will never have all of the colors that you see in real life or on your reference photo in a set. Even if you buy every color of pastel pencil, you will never get the exact color. So the layering is an essential technique to learn. The tonal value, remember, is definitely the most important. So I'm getting some dark on your first. I need, need to make sure this edge is dark or a bit darker so it pushes the distant mountains back even further. then I can come back in with some of that purple on top. And in the second video, you'll see how I'll take this blue all the way down. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. There's a two hour really in-depth version of this on my Patreon channel, that's on the $9 tier, and you'll get access to hundreds of hours of other videos as well.